The still upcoming Tesla Roadster is back in the news thanks to a hundreds of a second of improved and speculated 0 to 60 times and an announcement that it'll be delayed yet again. Via a series of tweets, reclusive and little known Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced he had, quote, radically increased the design goals for the new Tesla Roadster and the 0 to 60 miles per hour time would be less than one second and also assured anyone within X range that the Roadster first announced in 2017, would be revealed at the end of this year and aiming to ship in 2025. Based on the history of Elon's predictions, I'm not sure I'd wager any important organs on any of those statements, but even if we assume everything that's been said and so animatedly discussed come true, especially 0-60 to in less than one second, you can't help but wonder if Elon has thought through what the hell anyone is going to do with this. First, let's recap the tweetings, so we are all on the same page. Who knows exactly what this means? It could mean almost anything, really. The only definite thing it is possible to imagine is the frustration of the hardworking designers and engineers who have been working on the next generation of Tesla Roadster for the past seven years, seeing that the scope of their project has changed radically. They may not even be able to call it a car. Then we get to the stuff everyone is talking about. Now, it's definitely true with the that is the least interesting part, but everyone's trousers are all tangled and damp at this bold claim of going from a sleepy, inert immobility to a mile every minute in less time than it takes to show 24 frames of a movie. So let's dig in. First, it's worth noting that this claim is only 0.01 seconds quicker than the claim of the new Roadster getting from 0 to 60 in 1.1 seconds made back in mid-2021. The method for achieving this sort of near chameleon tongue levels of acceleration is not from a conventional automotive drivetrain based on spinning tires against pavement, but from something more exotic. Yes, the SpaceX option package, which is described as around 10 rocket thrusters mounted on the car. Further clarification revealed the rockets to be cold gas thrusters like the sort often used for reaction control system thrusters on spaceships. Essentially, jets of compressed nitrogen or air, which is about 80% nitrogen as it is. Then Jason Torchinsky did the math for the 1.1 second claims, but now we have someone with much more experience to do the math. Physicist Steven Granat. Here are the conclusions he came to. Another word for thrust is force, and force is equal to mass times acceleration. I'll assume the Roadster speeds up at a constant acceleration, which probably isn't true but is close enough for my purposes. To get to 60 miles per hour in 1.1 seconds, the car needs an acceleration of a touch over 24 meters per second squared, or nearly 2.5 g. Going back to high school physics, we know the force required will be acceleration times the car's mass. The battery pack may be around 800 kilograms. So I'll assume that the car will be around 1600 kilograms. That means the car needs nearly 39,000 newtons of thrust to reach that speed. So if we adapt the 1.1 seconds to 60 numbers to the new 1 second or less to 60, we are now dealing with about 2.75-ish G instead of 2.5, and we get about 43,000 newtons of thrust, which is a lot. That's about half the amount of thrust the main engine of the Apollo service module made, and that was enough to send the damn thing into lunar orbit from Earth orbit. We can subtract the acceleration force provided by the electric drivetrain as well, which gives about 20,000 newtons of force, leaving 23,000 newtons for the thrusters to cover to get to that magic under the one second mark. And keep in mind, to do this, those thrusters will need to be aimed rearward, as they expel close to 30 kilograms of air at around 1500 miles per hour. Doing this in track traffic, if you're racing for pinks or something, may not be such a polite thing to do to the people behind you. Elon also noted that all the ultra-pressure air needed for these thrusters will be stored in a pressure vessel SpaceX calls a composite overwrapped pressure vessel, which holds gases at a pressure of 6,000 psi. When Stephen did the math, he found that a 150-liter tank could work for this and still be compact enough to fit in the area of the Roadster normally used for these small backseats. It would 
however, take about 4 hours to replenish after use with an onboard compressor, and you would have to do that after pretty much every single 0 to 60 in 1 second launch. All of this is just to say that based on the analysis from our physics expert, it may be technically possible using cold gas thrusters for the Roadster to hit the goal of 0 to 60 in under 1 second. But that brings up the bigger question. Who gives a shit? Yes, that's right. Who gives a shit about 0 to 60 in under a second? It's useless. And we don't even mean that like a fast cars are useless way, because it's hard to believe that's true. Fast cars are a lot of fun, and fun is useful in all sorts of complex and subtle ways. It's more that this kind of fast is useless because it is. A car that goes 0 to 60 in under 1 second is the sort of thing that is appealing to a kid who just got transferred to a new middle school and wants some way to impress the other kids because they're understandably scared and insecure. It's the sort of thing that sounds cool if you don't like driving, because if you really like driving and you'd probably know that one second of acceleration thrill isn't that satisfying. And then you're there, doing 60 in a straight line to somewhere. What are you really going to do with something like this? If this feat of speed requires high-speed gases shooting out behind your car, it's not like you can just kick it on anywhere you're driving or at least not likely you can do so without some serious metaphorical blowback because of all the literal blowback. Will using it be legal? Are you okay with going to a drag strip to use it and then potentially having to wait 4 hours to recompress all the air? Are you qualified to handle a car that accelerates that fast? We all like to think we are, but Jason Tortinsky, the creator of the Autopian, once talked about that. I've been a passenger in a rally cross car that launches to 60 in 2.1 seconds and that feels like madness. The first time I piloted an actual dragster which didn't accelerate nearly as quickly as what we're talking about here, I almost crashed into a big heap of gravel like an idiot and even for people less idiotic than I am, being behind the wheel of something that hits 60 miles per hour that quickly is no joke. If and when these things start appearing on public roads, how many attempts to show off the rocket car will end with a car half embedded in an Arby's drive through as the dazed driver, surrounded by deflated airbags and sitting in urine-soaked pants, wonders what the hell just happened? It's clear that people have given histrionic warnings about fast cars in the hands of idiots before. And we've all seen the videos of carnage as people peel out of cars and coffee meetups, spinning out in machines with far more power than they know what to do with. There is a reason car shows have been banning certain cars, after all, and those are cars that still move via friction of wheels on the ground. When you introduce a whole new method of locomotion, one at least in part not dependent on the surface to gain speed, you may have the recipe for exciting chaos. Think about that for a moment. Surfaces have always been sort of self-managed when it comes to speed and braking. If you're on loose gravel or ice or other low friction surfaces, it's very hard to stop but it's also very hard to get moving. Wheels spin, noise and smoke happen, but not so much actual motion. When you introduce rocket engines, though, you can get moving very fast over pretty much anything. And unless there's another set of retro rockets facing the opposite end of the car, there's not a great way to stop. Let's say someone takes a SpaceX-enabled Roadster into a wet field and punches the big red launch button. Off the Roadster goes, maybe not hitting less than 1 second to 60 because the wheels can't get a grip, but still going fast. How will it stop? Locked wheels on wet grass just make the thing a sled. Maybe I'm needlessly worrying. Maybe there will be all sorts of safeguards in place and it'll be fine, but it'll still be stupid. I don't want to be a pessimist though. Elon himself said the 0 to 60 in under a second is the least interesting part and that's the part I hope is true. Because all the hype right now centers around this claim of quickness and I think the truth is that there is nothing less interesting or useful than a car that can get to 60 so fast using such exotic means that there's really absolutely nowhere you could actually do anything with it. Because who has the skills or required space or willingness? It's useless. It may as well not exist.